glass. No, it's okay, because it needs to be loud. Okay, so guys, yeah, so anyway, why 3 o'clock in the morning? Why from 3 to 6? Jesus was always in the mountain. Right, guys, we're talking about, um, I guess we're talking about demons and why we pray at night at 3 o'clock in the morning. And we're talking about how to set people free, I guess, from the demonic activity. How does a demon come into your body? Okay, basically, I guess the topic is prayers and demons, all right? The two kingdoms. All right, so yeah. Jesus always did it from 3 to 6 in the morning. He always prayed with his disciples, or sometimes alone, himself. Why? And from 3 to 6 o'clock in the morning, the spiritual realm opens, spirit. See, with flesh, we can't see spirit, but it opens. The same window from heaven that opens, it opens in hell also at the same time. Don't you notice that at 3 to 6 in the morning, always bad things happen in the streets or everywhere? Robberies always at 3 o'clock, 6 in the morning, rapes. Um, adultery commits and people in strip clubs so it's from 3 to 6 in the morning people sin is more manifested from 3 to 6 o'clock in the morning it's a window of, of, of the darkness the kingdom of darkness of ignorance Satan's sin, sin kingdom that arises and, and they come on the streets it's like a mission he sends them out you go, go go to the strip club you go to this bar you go to this place you go to that place you go to that house and that's what they do to demons. It's like a, it's like an army. Think of an army. That's what it literally is. It's an army. He sends out people, and the demons come into the people. So anyway, it opens two windows of heaven and of, of Satan. So at that time, when we get up and pray, even witchcraft people, sorcerers, and, and people who do voodoo, they wake up at the same time and pray also. But they don't pray to God. Who do they pray to? To Satan, because they are his prophets. But well, we are God's prophets. You know what I mean? So it's like two people fighting. You in your house praying against me, and I'm praying against you. You know what I mean? But it's the kingdom of light, which is Jesus. It's more powerful than the kingdom of darkness. But we have to fight the battle. We have to wake up. I know our bodies don't want to. We have to wake up. Jesus did it. That's why he was always successful in casting out a demon from people. But other people couldn't do it. Why? When we go pray, we're talking to the Father. We come in the Father's presence. Correct? So when we're in the Father's presence, he's so powerful and mighty that when we leave his presence, we leave like we're residue. For example, you know like when you eat food and you get crumbs in your mouth and you leave it, you got a crumb in your mouth, you got to take it off. Imagine that God's presence completely covering you. When you leave God, for example, okay, um, uh, if you come in a house, that, okay, if somebody has a lot of perfume on, think of that of the presence of God, and then you hug that person, or you are around that person, and then when you leave, you smell like that person. Same thing is with the presence of God. When you come close to God and speak to Him and pray to Him, when you leave, the presence is still with you. So every time Jesus came from, from the mind, praying from the presence of God, he came from the mind with power, the same power that God has. The power to heal people, the revelation to teach, preach, and to cast out demons. And not anybody can just cast out a demon. You have the power to cast it out, but it's through our obedience of the word and through our intimacy with the Father, praying, intercession. That's when it happens, for real. You know what I mean? So it's like... You can just really cast out a demon like that. You have to fight. You know what I mean? So you're going to have the, the, the power to, you know what, the name of Jesus has declared healing in the person. The person going to get healed. Why? Because you you enter with the Father. That residue of His presence is with you everywhere you go because you're always seeking the Father. So when we pray, it's the world is open, but we're there fighting, fighting. Because those demons are going to come to our own house and to our family. So what we do, Father God, I cover my family in the name of Jesus, my God. I pray that any demonic activity falls back. You're fighting. It's not against flesh and blood, but against um, principalities, spiritual forces, rulers, and authorities. That's what we're fighting against, in the spirit realm. So we have to get up and pray and fight. And pray for our family, pray for our daughters, for our cousins. We have to get up and pray for our country. There's a demon assigned to every person, to every country, to every neighborhood, to every block, to every house. You understand that? There's a demon assigned just for America. That's a principality. The president is the president of America. That's the principality. For example, I'm just teaching you, you know, so you can understand. The president rules America. There's a demon that tries to rule America. Now, then you have the, 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 the governor that rules different states. No, it's a governor that rules the whole country, for example. It's another governor. That's the, that's the level. Captain and the president, then the, the governor. And then a governor in each state. There's 50 states. It's 50 demons, for example, for each state, controlling each state, because the, the president, the top demon, tells that person what to do. Now, the governor of a state says what to do for each council member or each mayor in each city. And then the mayor tells who? 
what to do. The other people under him, and those people sent the cops, the police, they go places. They, they go around in cars, for example, right? That's how demons do it. It's by authority. One, two, three, four, and then they tell what to do. And then somebody from back up there is ruling, saying, go to that person's house. And that person has the authority to go in your house and come inside your house, possibly inside you. How can they enter your body? How can a demon enter your body? How do demons enter people's bodies? One, by you giving them the license to enter. Wait a minute, how can you give a demon a license to enter? Praying is you giving a, a license to God to come in your life. We agree on that? We need we need a license to drive, we need a, we need a license to do everything. But when we pray, we asking God, that's your license. So you can come in my life and help me out with my struggles, to fix my life, to help me out, to change me, to promote me, to bless me, to prosper me. That's the license when you pray. That's why it's important to pray. If you don't pray, God's not going to come in your life and help you out with what you want, or what you need, and what you desire, and where you want to go. If you don't pray, it's like, God, I don't know what I'm, when you pray, it's you say, God, show me my purpose. Show me what I got to do because I'm blind right now. I'm just guessing. Should I do this? Should I do that? But when we pray, God directs you. You don't got to be lost. Just as, as with demons, you could give demons a license to enter your body, to enter your house, your body, or whatever state. How? How does the demon look A demon is, is ugly. Think of something ugly and dark. Exactly as I look like. You can't see it, but you can feel it. Maybe in the dreams, you see, I see them all the time in my dreams because I'm always fighting with them. He's seeing them too in the dreams. They, they, they're ugly creatures. There's something. So, why do you see the thing? What's it called? When people se monta. When the gente se monta, when people get possessed. It's the difference. I'm going to talk about that right now. Okay, pause for one second. So, the demons can come in their life. How? By you give them a license to. Because we give them authority. When we give God authority to enter our life, we give him authority through our obedience. So when we're obedient, we're respectful, we follow the commands of God, when we, you know, we do godly things that we're supposed to be done from the beginning. So we give him a license, give him the authority to be in our lives. Now, when we obey the demons, we give them, them also authority. Authority means to let them rule us. How? Well, Jesus said, um, thou shalt not commit adultery. Adultery is when you marry and you sleep with another woman or somebody's wife, for example. If I'm married and I sleep with another woman, that's adultery. Fornication is when you're single and you have sex out of marriage. That's fornication. That's against God's will. Those, for example, are those that the demons can enter your house. Why? And to you, because you're not supposed to do that. So you give the demons authority to come in your house. You know what I mean? No, no, for example, when you watch pornography, God doesn't like you watching pornography. Because first of all, why are you watching somebody else have sex when, when you have your wife? I made sex for marriage. If you're single, why are you watching pornography when I said don't have sex? Because, say this out, if you got demons work, when you watch pornography, you're looking at it. The eyes is the window of the soul. So whatever you watch is going to come in you. Now, if every day you receive something like pornography, you gotta want to manifest what you see. You gotta want to do what you see. Am I right? So while you're watching it, you gotta get desires. You gotta turn yourself on, for example. And you gotta want to do something. You gotta get that desire that we all get because it's natural. It's natural to get that desire, but we have to control. We have to get the mini control of that because you know under God. You know what I mean? So you watching, you desire. That's when people become rapists. Right. That's when people become rapists. That's when people actually become homosexual sometimes. That's when people become angry. That's when people become perverts because they watch pornography. Because they're watching it and they see it and then they want to do it. You know what I mean? So then you have to decide the feeling. Then you look at a girl. Mm, look at that over there. Look at a guy. Mm, mm. Because it's in your mind already. Your body's desiring it. Because you're watching it. So you're giving a license to that demon of pornography to enter in you. And then that's entering, right? But then when you manifest when you actually do the same, when you actually have the sex, that's when you give them the total power. You give them the authority by you watching. You give them the power by you actually doing what they're doing in TV with somebody else. So now, that's called being demonized. It's different from being possessed. Demonized is when a demon controls a certain area of your life. For example, that sex drive, you control that. For example, that gluten, you're eating too much. For example, drugs, that's another demon. If it's alcohol, if it's weed, if it's whatever drugs are nowadays, it's one assigned for each person. So when you do that, 
you give them that license to rule that that area in your life. You get it? Like you need a license to drive in that area of town, and when you go outside, you get another license for that state. What do you do? When you disobey God, you give a demon's license to rule that area of your life. If you're disrespectful, disobedience, you give a license to a demon to come to life and rule that. And when he rules that, that's why you behave bad all the time. You always hate people. You're always angry because you gave a demon a door. How do you close that door? The, 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 the door of unforgiveness. That's an open door. You don't forgive people. That's bad. You're supposed to forgive because God said, forgive others like I forgive you. He said, basically, if you don't forgive others, I'm not going to forgive you. So before you even ask me for anything that you want, go back and apologize to your brother. Even though he did you wrong or you have it, then come ask me and then I'll give you. So look at that. It's the key. I'm coming to you right now. For you to, for God to, for you to ask God something, for him to give it to you, you have to forgive. When you don't forgive, that's an open door for demon to rule. Unforgiveness brings bitterness. It brings anger. It brings resentment. Unforgiveness, people always get mad at something, but they don't know what it is. It's unforgiveness. When they forgive people, they're closing that door for the demon not to come in. And now they're letting God rule that area of their life. So when you forgive, you're more happy. You're less stressed out. You don't got to be thinking about some other person or thinking about God, what happened to your life years ago or what somebody did to you. How can you make God forgive you? How can you make God forgive you? Good question. It's the best question you've ever asked in your life. We ask God, forgive me for my sin that I did. And cover me with the blood of Christ and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And then he, when you say that prayer, you get an eternal life. And you're getting God's forgiveness for whatever you've done. So it's like you start fresh from not right now. Right now you can start fresh your life. If you never forgave somebody or you never you are you know you you know you you're for example a disobedient person. You can God ask God for forgiveness throughout Jesus and you're saved right now. And God will forgive your whole past. Whatever it does not matter what you did. It doesn't matter you can kill somebody, you can do whatever. You know, because now you're a new person. Some, some people say I'm, I'm sorry God ten times. Some people say sorry God ten times, yes, because they do ten times the same thing. We know what repent means. It means to turn away. For example, if I keep watching pornography and I say, God, forgive me. I don't want to watch pornography no more. He said, okay, my son and my daughter, I will forgive you. But you have to let that go. You can say, I'm sorry, God, and then watch it again. Sorry, God, and then watch it again. You have to let it go. You have to turn away from it. And then that's, um, that's when God forgives you like all the way. When, that's repentance. When you repent, when you say, you know, I want to turn away from that. Some people forget that they said sorry, God, and they do it all over again. Right. Why? Because they're letting the demon come in their lives instead of them pray more. How do you do that when you pray more? When you read the Bible more? You know, instead of watching TV for 10 minutes, pick up the Bible, read it. You give them God a license to work in their life. But when you're watching something you're not supposed to be watching because the eyes the window of the soul, you're giving licenses to those demons to come in their life. Now, when they possess, this is a different like, question that you asked. Being demonized and being possessed is different things. Being demonized is when a certain demon controls a certain area of your life. Whether it's lust, sex, pornography, smoking, whatever, anything that's bad, that's disobedient towards God. Being possessed is like literally the movie, The Exorcist. Rah, 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 rah. That's possessed. That's being possessed. That's like an extreme measure. You need your godfather in conduct. Huh? When you get that, you need your godfather in conduct. No, when you get that, you need Jesus. That's who you need. What's your question? Why people say that, like movies, like Okay, when people kill in the movies, why do they say that they're real? Because the movie is a copy of the real stuff. And sometimes fake stuff, but mostly copy of the real stuff. So that means Bloody Mary is real? Uh, listen, this is the problem. If you want to see, this is the problem. Let me, let me get to it now. Like I said, what you watch is in your mind. So you're watching Bloody Mary, and you say Bloody Mary five times in the mirror. Nothing's going to happen to you, really. But since, since you're calling upon that, you want to see that Bloody Mary God, he will appear to you. Why? Because Satan is like, oh, you want to see something scary, when it's one of the demons, let me send him one of the demons. So when you go to the mirror, you say that he will appear because you're calling upon him. No, because one day my cousin, Jaden, he said that if, it was a game it's like a scary movie game, and then... It's like they, they you he did it before, and he came up the scratch. Scratch? Okay, but, but that's what I'm saying. He's calling upon that demon. Because scary movies, all that is no, demonized. It wasn't that. No, but it's okay. No, wait, I, I want to continue here. Listen, when you watch something scary, I don't watch no scary movies. First of all, I don't like them because I think they're all the same. 
He's always a monster in the cloud, and there's a, a, the hero that kills him, and then, or they burn him alive or drown him, and then that's it. And then it's a part two because he survives again. <laughs> I don't like scary movies. Why? I just said that your eyes are the windows of your soul. So when you watch scary stuff, those demons, you making them enter into you, and then when you go to sleep, you have nightmares. You give them a license to come in you. I have nightmares sometimes because my cousin, um, that's where he showed me a game in his old house and his computer. He said it, 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 it's a game for a little girl with dog and you got a dog. Um, and when, when he finished the game, uh, Bloody Mary came out. Okay. So don't watch those games and you will stop having nightmares. He showed me on YouTube. Right. He's showing you. When you see something, what it comes to him through three eyes, right? Exactly. So don't see those things. The point is not to see them. The point is not to give up open doors to the enemy. The point is not to do that. You know what I'm saying? I stay away from that, so I don't have those nightmares. I always speak to God, so God speaks to me in dreams. Instead of me having nightmares, I have good dreams. That's the point. You cannot watch that. No matter how cool your friend think it is, oh, yo, this is nice. They watch this scary movie. No, don't watch it because you're calling those things in your life. Sometimes they trick you. They trick you all the time because they always lie to you. Now, for example, also with music. We got to be careful what we listen to. It. We know we got to be careful what we listen to because... It, your ears is also a, a, a place where things enter, correct? They enter your ear. Yes. So if you listen to music with bad lyrics. That's, that's how they were learning how to say bad words. Yes, exactly. Give me one second. Right. When you, exactly. If you hear bad words, you're going to say bad words because that's what's coming into you. So what comes in is what's going to come That's out. what she said. She said. Okay, no problem. I know. I know. Let, let me keep talking. I'm going to answer all your questions. So whatever you listen to comes in, it's going to come out. So we got to be careful with that. That's what people say. How come Christians can't do this, can't do that? Because we don't want to allow anything to come in us that's dirty. We try to allow things to come in us through our eyes, through our ears, things that are positive, or things that are of God or faith, not things that are crazy. Sometimes so when it comes out, the good thing comes out. Sometimes they get scared to turn around without feeling like something that happened. Right, because you're watching it. But if you, like I said, you pray, Father God, I declare your peace in here, or I think little demons to leave, you're going to feel that peace. So that's why I turn around with my eyes closed. No, you, you st when you feel that, you start praying. And you say, Jesus, you're with me, now, now, now I'm not scared, and you wouldn't be scared. That's the point. It's either you want to see Jesus, or you want to see Bloody Mary. Who you want to see? Jesus. Exactly. So you call upon Jesus. You see what I mean? simple. When you watch Jesus, you're going to see Jesus. When you're looking for scary movies, you're going to have nightmares. So it depends on you what you're looking for. Now, nightmares are bad. I would, I would, I hate, I would hate to have nightmares. So that, that's why I dream my prayer of the child. I'm scared my legs shake. Right, but when you're scared, just pray. Be like, Jesus, I know you love me and you're with me here and I'm not scared. Trust me, you wouldn't be scared. So now, when we open doors to demons, it's a big issue. Not just one demon, many demons. That's why people become possessed. It's like another extreme, like they're really crazy. And then you need somebody under the power of God, under the presence of God, only the blood of Jesus, the power, the name of Jesus could, could deliver that person from those demons. You know what I mean? So that's why constantly got to stay in contact with the word of God, always praying, always seeking God. So when we encounter somebody like that, we have the power and authority to cast that demon out. For example, some of us, some people, some parents, some friends in the house is always angry. Give me one second, I'll come right with you. Are they always angry? Why are they always angry? What do you think they always, why come they are always angry? Because the things that you do. Because the things that you do. That means that a certain demon, a certain spiritual force is um, controlling that area of the life, which is the anger. What does somebody angry need? Attention. Huh? Attention. What? Attention. Attention? Well, that's what they want, because the spirit wants attention. So somebody's angry will kick a chair. Ah! That's the demon they manifesting. So, you know, you pray against the spirit of anger. But by declaring God's peace, you be like, God, you know, declare your peace in her. And that person might get delivered. You know what I mean? So that's what we got to do. We got to stay away from that. Yes. Why do they always want to get away? Because they think they're the boss. Well, it's not their way. It's Jesus' way. So they're going to try to make you do things their way. They want you to be angry at people. They want you to curse. They want you to do bad things because they want it their way. But God wants you to do good things. You see, it's like total opposite. So we got to be careful. So we always got to behave. That we're going to give open doors to the enemy all the time. All the time we gotta be aware. It's not it's not no game. Just because somebody does something and it's still normal for New York City or Brooklyn, uh, per se, for example, 
uh, of fashion. Just because everybody does it doesn't mean you got to do it. There's nothing wrong with fashion. I'm just saying. But just because somebody always, for example, curses, you don't, you don't have to curse. Give me a second. I'll be right with you. You don't have to curse. Because many people are like, oh, but my friend curses. Yeah, but why you got to curse? Why do you be the different one and don't curse? He's being a follower. Huh? He's being a follower. Right. Instead of being a leader, not cursing, doing the right things. Yes. Thank you. Preaching for me tonight. <laughs> All right, so we gotta be careful with that, you know what I mean? Just because your friend does it or somebody does it in the family doesn't make it okay. Is it okay in front of God's eyes? Does God like that? Is it okay with God? Why don't we ask God first before we do things? We should ask God anytime before we do things. You know what I mean? Because God's the one's gonna lead us the right way. Instead of, instead of asking your friend, oh, you think I should do this? No, no, ask God. God, what do you think? And trust me, God will speak to you if you learn how to Listen. You gotta know how to listen and God will speak to you. You don't have to ask nobody for nothing, no opinion. You ask God, He will speak to you. Like I said, you gotta know how to listen. That's how you gotta know how to do it. Amen? Yeah, what's the question? Why do people say, like, I hate God? Why do people say, I hate God? People say, I hate God because they like they, they love. Let me, let me read that for you, matter of fact. Let me read that for you. I'm gonna read it for you in the Bible. I don't know what I'm reading from the Bible. Now he says that, that, that God hates us. No, God doesn't hate us. He doesn't, God does not hate us. He loves us. I'm going to tell him what he loves us right here. Look what it says here. In John 3, 16, look what it says. Now, okay, you, you heard that from him, right? Do you believe that? No. How, why you don't believe it? Because only four years old. Because only four years old. Well, those who are listening, she said that uh, people say God hates us. But I'm going to tell you how much God loves us because that's what they say. Um, Something I posted on Instagram today. I said, listen, um, everybody knows uh, about Jay-Z. Uh, uh, Give me a second, Fred. I'm going to get me right, okay? I know you got a lot of questions. People know about Jay-Z. Who doesn't know Jay-Z? He's a famous, you know, God bless the famous rapper. You know, he's known. He's an entrepreneur. And, you know, people know about Jay-Z. But you don't know Jay-Z. You don't know Jay-Z either because you never met him. That I know. You don't know him, who he is personally. You know who he is in the TV. Now, many people know about God, know about Jesus. But they don't know him personally. It's the big difference being known about this and me knowing him. Oh, yeah, I know about him. Yeah, I know him is a difference. So we gotta strive to get to know God. That's what I was posting this one earlier. So now let's see how, how much God loves us. The Bible tells us how much God loves us. We're gonna read it right now. John 3:16, it says like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but may have eternal life. Do you believe in Jesus? So you will not die, you will have eternal life. Very it's simple. Look at how much he loved us. He gave his son to die for us. They killed him, they beat him, they murdered him, they, they put him in a cross. They, they whipped him 39 times, they pulled his beard, they slapped him, they made fun of him. They wow. put a crown of thorns and he was bleeding all over. That's what happened to Jesus. Why did they do that? Because it had to be done. We're gonna get to that deeper, but they killed him. And that was God. And he huh? so loved us. They plug so like that. Yeah, yeah, and that was his only begotten son. Why didn't we have five kids? Wait, you're talking. And they take one away. You wouldn't even give it up, right? But they took his only begotten son. That's how much he loved us. So loved us. So that was four. Yes, we gotta get to that second. Okay. That's why people need to appreciate Yeah, that's why people need to appreciate why he died for us. So it's like if he died for us. He did us a favor. He delivered us from sin, from the power of the enemy. Because now we could, you know, take control back of our lives. Because when we let demons in our lives, we now have control. But when we have Jesus, we have control, we have power, we have dominion over that spiritual force. It's like it's like America fighting a little country. We have the oh, superpower to fight that little country. Compare Jesus to that little power of the devil. We have power. So he loved us so much that he gave his son to die for us, to kill them. He suffered pain just like you did. If you heard Jesus hurt because he was human, but at the same time God. So we killed him basically as humans. But he loved us so much that he gave his son. So when he died for us and then he lived three days later, he resurrected. Now we have the power of that because he beat death. Nobody has ever come back to life. Only Jesus came back to life. Uh, yes. A little girl, um, her name is, I forgot her name, but she made a song for Jesus. She made a song for Jesus? What do you want to make a song for Jesus? She's only, she's only four years she's only four old. Years old and, look, and she understands Jesus. And so many grown people don't believe in Jesus. Why? Because, because this is what it says here. Ask for it. Okay. 
All right, look, I'm going to read it to you right here. This is why they don't believe in Jesus, okay? This is why. Um, John 3, 17. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, I mean, to blame them. But in order that the world might be saved through him. So he sent his Son so we can be saved. From what? From hell. From sicknesses. From sin. Give me one second. Let me finish. I got you. And then verse 18 says, three, John 3, 18 says, Those who believe in him are not condemned, are not blamed for their sin, are not blamed for what they're going through. But those who do not believe are condemned already. So if you don't believe, you're already condemned. You, you're already blamed for not believing. You hear that? And then as I see, um, because they have not believed in the name of the of the only Son of God, which is Jesus. And this is the most important part right here. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. That's Jesus. He came as light, as knowledge. Every time you see light in the Bible, think of knowledge. Think of truth. Think of good things. When you see the word darkness, think of evil. Think of bad things. Light, knowledge, truth. Darkness, ignorance from the truth. That's what it is. So indeed, the light has come into the world as Jesus. And people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. People love to be in darkness and ignorance because their deeds are evil. Evil people don't like good stuff. People, evil people don't like um, um, holy people. Give me a second. I'll be with you. Evil people don't like to do good things because they're evil. So when Jesus is good, he's light, he's the truth, evil people don't want to know about him. That's why they killed him. Because they always do bad stuff. And they don't want to be, they, don't, they always want to keep doing it. Because of those demons that control them like that. You got it? So people who love darkness, they don't like the light, which is truth. They like to stay ignorant. Ignorant of the truth. What is the truth? Well, we read it. John 14, 16 says, um, this, is, this is what it says, right? I recall, John 14, 16. Uh, give me one second. I'll be, I'll be right with you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, I forgot what it is, but Jesus said, what is the truth? Jesus is the truth. Why? He said, I am the truth. Period. I am the truth. And he's got, I am the truth. I am the way, and I am the life. I am the truth. That means if you don't have Jesus in your heart, and you don't follow Jesus, you don't know his teachings, his, his commands, you don't know truth. You believe something, and you think that's true to you, but what is the truth? Truth is in the top. Well, you think is in the bottom, but what's the truth? Give me a second. I'll be right with you, okay? Hold the question, okay? This is different between facts and truth. What's a fact? The fact is that this color is beige. That's a fact. You see it. But what's the truth behind it? You know what I'm saying? What's the real truth? Why did to you it's beige, but to me it looks like brown? But now me and you are fighting. But what is the truth? In your life, Jesus is the truth. Today I had this conversation with this friend that I like her a lot. But she just keeps saying when I talk to her on the phone, she says, I'm fine, I'm okay. But me, but I'm is going the in a situation, but I'm not in a situation, but I have my faith. Amen. And I'm trying to put her allowed, bring these people to believe Amen. in the truth. Amen. But she like talking about the fact, and now you blew that up. Right, but what is the truth? The fact is that she, the, 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 the fact is that she says she's feeling bad. But she says, I'm okay, I'm okay, you're okay, you're yeah, okay. But she's, the truth is that she's torn down inside. Mm -hmm. That she's going to hell in the inside. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. The fact is to her that, oh, I'm okay. No, the truth is that you're feeling bad. Jesus is the truth. He, he brings truth to truth. He brings the darkness to the truth. You know what I'm saying? So he says, I am the truth. I am the way. The way to what? Jesus, you are the way to what? Am I lost? Where do I got to go? I don't know my way. Well, practically we don't. That's why God sent his son to that one. But you don't know a way. A way to what? A way to live. Do you know your purpose in life? Do you know your purpose? You sure? Purpose. Not your purpose. God's purpose. Okay. The truth purpose. Uh, you might not. Right? Some of us you might. Some of you might not. But how do you find out? You go to the person that said, I am the way. Jesus, you say, you are the way and the truth and the life. So give me, give me the truth about the way I got to go in my life. You get it? Give me the truth about the way I got to go in my life. I am the truth I'm on the life. You want to know your purpose? Speak to God. Be like, God, you created me because I didn't create myself. No, What's my purpose? I, Give me, I'll be right with you. Okay, sweetie, I don't know how to, you know, I, I, you know. Give me one second. Let me finish so then I can answer your question, okay? So wait, I'll be right back to you. So what's the purpose? That couch did not create itself. Only the person, the carpenter that made that couch knew what the couch was for. Am I correct? That's the truth right there. That cop does not know what it was made for. The carpenter knows. 
we didn't create ourselves. God created us. So I don't know my purpose. God, why you why you I gotta live here in Bullshit in Brooklyn? Why I gotta be here? Why I gotta be born in this family? Only God knows. Only God because He created us. So for you to know what's your life, what's your what's your purpose in life, you have to go back to the creator. The creator. That's it, nobody else. Alright? What's your question? I got right back to you. It's kinda I I always ask myself, was like, you see how you your mother? Mm-hmm. Like, they got you. Like, who, who was, like, the first one? Because your mom's mom. Okay. Mom's mom. And who was the got first you. one? I'm going to tell you. She, uh, for those who didn't listen, who um, didn't hear her, she said, who was the first mother? Because my mother got a mother. Her mother got a mother. And her mother got a mother. Who's the first mother? They were born. It's her turn. And I got you, okay? You want to know who's your first mother? You turn to the Bible. I so when God first created humans, Adam and Eve. Yeah. God first created Adam and then created Eve. And that's the mother of our mothers. We give me a, you gotta learn how to you know simmer down. You know, I'm gonna get to. I need that question. I know, but give, give me a second. I come right back to you. Hold it, right? Can you hold it? Hold it. Everybody okay? Everybody good? Um. So that was the first woman in the whole world. So we came out of her. You know what I mean? We gotta study that later. I know you're interested. In that. We're gonna do a little study on Adam and Eve. Who we came from? We gotta come from somebody. My mother got a mother. Got a mother. Got a mother. But that was so long ago. That's so many mothers. What's the question? Say nice and loud so they can hear you. You forgot the question, right? You wanted it so bad you forgot? Come back to me when you know, okay? Okay. Uh, I know who was the first mother. Who was the first mother? No, Maria was not the first mother. Maria was the, the, the mother of Jesus, but she was not the first mother. Eve was the first mother. Okay, you want to put it back. Uh, I know. Girlfriend. Jesus did not have a girlfriend. So I have a son. No, God had a son. God, yeah, who is God's wife? God doesn't have a wife. So how did he have one? Because God, remember the class you told me this? God, listen, this is how it started. God was by himself in the throne with okay. Jesus and okay. the Holy Spirit. They were all, they, they always existed. It's not, nobody created God. God always existed. How? When you get to heaven, you ask him. <laughs> you know what I mean? But God, give me a second. Leave back a little bit. <laughs> I know, but wait, but that's a question, though. I see your question. I gotta ask her question. So God always was. Yes, so imagine, imagine. Yeah, two, questions. two questions, good. That's the first one. God always was. Well, let me answer that one first. God always was, right? Nobody created him. He always was. And then God said, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, it's us here. And then God created heaven. That's when you when we read Genesis 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens. You heard it, isn't it? In the beginning, when God created the heavens, first he created the heavens, and then he created the earth. Amen? And the earth was formless, and that's when everything came about. First the heavens and the earth, and then we created us humans. That's what, how it became about. Yes, what's the question? What happens to us if, if, if we die? No, what happens to uh, us if I'm we die? I'm fine. I'll come right back, so I'm sorry. Uh, what happens to us if God didn't send Jesus to... Wow, man, I think that's always correct asking those questions. Right, her question was, what would happen to us if God wouldn't send Jesus to die for us on the cross? We will all be going to hell. Period. We will all be in sin. We will all be in sickness. We will all be terrible. Literally. And there's no mercy, no hope for us. But that's the thing. That God sent his son Jesus to die and resurrect for us. So we can have life. So who will be in the world? If what? Who will be in the world if we didn't be in the world? No, well, when we die, we just go to hell. Are you, only God is going to be alive? No, oh, but you're going to be alive. Because you when, one second, sorry. When you accept Jesus, you're going to live forever with Jesus. That's it. You're good. You're saved. What's your question? You see, when you die, like, how does it they feel like your soul goes to hell and you're good? And okay. If you're bad, it goes to hell. No, the opposite. The opposite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you're good, your soul goes to heaven, and when you're bad, your soul goes to hell. is good. Yes. How do you God is good? No, that didn't make no sense. Wait, wait. How, wait, does, uh, like, so how does that work? How does that work? Your skeleton stays in the casket and your soul. Exactly. All right, look. We we humans are three parts. God is spirit. Remember, God is not like this. God is spirit. You can't see him. So it, it, God made us in his spirit, right? Um, um, Jihad, please, can you say right? Jihad, say correct, like a lady. Like a lady. Um, so what? God, um, he's spirit, so he created us in spirit. And then it says in the Bible that he formed us like, like a mold. Out of dust from the earth. So he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a body that got created. Boom, that's it. But I'm dead. I'm not alive yet. And it said that God breathed 
his spirit into us, and whoop, there was Lewis. That's it. There was Adam and Eve. You know what I mean? So he blew his spirit. So we, we spirit, we have a soul, which is the soul we think, we feel, and we have a body, which is the, the casket, like the cocoon. This is the body. So we have a spirit that lives inside of us. We have a soul that makes us think and feel. So the word of God says in Thessalonians, and we have a body. So we three. So when we talk, God is talking for us. Right now, God is talking for me. I'm not. So that's God talking right now. Give me a second. You gotta be. You gotta calm down. Um, God is talking for us. Why? Because I'm teaching. What am I teaching? His word. So it's Him speaking through me. Whatever I'm saying is God putting it in me. And whatever you're saying is because God's putting that question in you, so you can know. Because you were asking me. So it's like God's putting that desire in your heart to ask me so I can tell you. And you're going to have your answer, your question, your answer to your question. So when we die, if you're obedient, if you accept Jesus first of all, as your Lord and Savior, like she asked, how do we go to heaven? How do we bring heaven to earth? You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The only way. Because he said, I am the, the truth. I am the way of the truth, the life, and I am the way, basically. So the only way to heaven is Jesus. So you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Not by going to church every Sunday. Not by thinking that you do good, but by, by believing in you, through faith in Jesus, by accepting him him as your Lord and Savior, and then you'll be saved and being obedient. But then when you're bad, when you do bad things, if you don't repent and turn to Jesus, when you die, you will be cast away from God's presence. You'll be going to hell. Period. That's it. Those who are disobedient go somewhere else, and those who are obedient go to heaven. Yes. She just said, she said it wrong because she said, if, she just said it, he said if you go to hell, your soul goes to hell. Your spirit goes to hell. Isn't it supposed to be your soul goes to heaven and you go to hell? No, no, no. We're, we're, everything goes to one place. If you're, listen, the things we bought, we all got, when God made us, we're going to let let me ask you a question. We got to, I can answer it first. <laughs> She's so curious. It's okay, right? We have a father, good? Amen. God is here. We're talking, but God is here. Let me tell you, God is talking right here. So when you die, we all going to live forever. We're going to live forever for eternity. Not this, this die, like the skeleton is taken in the sky, in the casket. But our spirit is forever. Now, your spirit can go two places. If you're good, if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to be in heaven with God, in the presence of God. If you're bad, here on earth, and you disobey, you're going to go to hell. The lake of fire. We're going to be tormented for the rest of your life, for eternity. So you, our average life is about 60 to 80 years. And then and you that, die. The person that made that yes. movie 2012. I have two questions. Wait, when the world is ending. Uh -huh. My grandma told me that in the Bible it says that the world ends when you die. Like for you, like if you pass away, like right. the world ends. For you. It's going to be a time where God's going to come again and that's going to happen. We're going to speak about that. But when you die, the world ends for you. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, what's your question? Then we're going to ask answer that question. Because I know you guys got questions, all right? <laughs> yes. How can that happen? Like if you take a picture... Um, it could be the picture itself. It could be in your mind because it wants you to see it because you want to see it. Because I can take a picture and I could be like Jesus is behind me, and I can see Jesus because I know how he looks. You understand? All right, I know, I know, but I can see Jesus. Jesus is here right now. You can see him, but he is here right now. Like when they say, like my mom, like she says, like when it's raining. No, that's 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 I say that. that's not that people say because it's it's it's, it's mysticism. It's people that say that it's superstitious. That's not really true like that. You know, God made rain to water the earth. Period. That's it. You want to? You got a lot of questions. Yeah, this is what you answer right right here in the Bible. You got a lot of questions. Every answer right here. You go ask me. I know, but they mostly all here. If you read this, all your questions will be answered, and even better than I can answer them because here is already written. You have a Bible in your house. She has one. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to know, you know, let me know. I'll give you what you read it at. Um, so, yeah, guys, so we're talking about demons and how they come into life, right? Yeah. And that's the way they come into life. When you give them a certain area to control. But sometimes we don't have the strength to get out of pornography. Sometimes we don't have the strength to get out of, uh, out of sexual morality, immorality. Sometimes we don't have the strength to get out of a drug addiction. What do you do then? You need a higher power. You need a higher power. You need God. You need to black those yes, you need to black those noses. Listen, the thing is with that with like, you guys you need to stop it's it's what you put used to. And, and I tell you a story where uh, you know someone someone just gave me a testimony this morning. God gave me a word on Sunday for someone at church. And the word was that the person was in a loose way supernaturally. 
and I guess they've been listening to the wrong voices. Of, um, I guess this person is awake. I guess what well, she is. But the point was that she was listening to someone tell her that she would never get married because she's overweight. So what you listen to stays in you, what you give ears to. I saw when people tell you that if you're not walking around with people of faith and you're walking around with people that are merely walking around, they kind of live in like, like waves, they, their emotions is up and down and they live on emotions. When you live by the word of God, you don't live by emotions. That's why he was saying facts. And truth. Sometimes it's, it, people talk about the facts, but it's not the truth that God wants for you. Amen? So let's say you're going through a yeah, hardship time, but the word of God says, Everything you touch will be blessed and you live in an abundance of life. But the God, fact is she sees you. Give it a second. Once you finish it, it's a The problem. fact is you might be going through hardship, but you're going through it for a testimony. But the truth is, you're gonna come out of it. It's so temporary. So what I'm trying to say is that what you girls are listening to, the people keep saying about scary movies, when they telling you, walk away and let them talk on their own. And just tell them, you know, the word of God tells you, mm -hmm. I should feel no evil. You know what I mean? So you gotta replace it with the word. What they're saying is just myths. Amen? And, and the thing is, someone else is like, you know, how can I grow in faith? How can I grow in the word? You need to read the word. Listen to the word. Amen? So the thing is, if you keep listening to these lives, the enemy is going to use these people to bring lives to your life. Amen? Go ahead. Can this mean that you people say, I wish you could die? Which is Wishes is not from God, because we, we not you know we don't wish, and we not you know we don't live in hope. We're blessed, amen. Like I said, whatever you receive and you, and you receive when a person tells you that you're going to get. So basically, we have the authority. That's not good. We have the authority to receive. That's why when, when someone tells you a negative word upon your life, you have to cancel in the name of Jesus. Because if, if, it, if you accept it, if, if a person of authority tells you something, the, you know, that could come upon your life if you receive it. So you got to watch out what voices you're listening to. Right. There's a bad voice and a good voice. The good voice is always good and the bad voice is always bad. So if the voice is telling you, you can do it, that's God talking to you. If the voice tells you, you can't do it, that's the devil talking to you. Period. God always tells you to do something good, not bad. What are you thinking? Should I do this? Should I do not? When you're thinking, oh, I can't make it. I can't. I'm not strong enough. I'm not big enough. I'm too young. That's the devil talking. You listen to the devil's voice. Yes. Because it's negativity. And God doesn't go by negativity. He goes by faith. You better, I can't do it. I am strong. You could be a skinny stick. And the stick says I'm strong. The stick is strong. Period. Because that's faith in God. Not in itself. Not in itself. You see Samson in the Bible? Samson was a strong man. He was a but people think that Samson was a big strong guy. Samson was never a big strong guy. You think Samson like a big wrestler? Oh, he was big. He could turn down a wall. He could lift up a, a whole big metal gate or something. He was strong. He was powerful. But he was not strong. He was not like a, a big guy. He was a skinny guy. A skinny guy. Probably like me and you like that. But guess what? We were skinny and strong by faith in God, right? Because he would have been big. It would have God would have been. God wouldn't be able to glorify himself. Yeah. Look at the ant. The ant is small. The ant is one of the smallest animal. And the ant can pick up 30 times its own weight. Its own weight the ant can pick up 30 times. That means it makes the ant stronger than an elephant. Stronger than a whale. Think about it. Now that's true right there. The fact is that the ant is really small. And the whale is bigger than the elephant. But the ant is even stronger than the lion. Because it could pick up 30 times its own weight. That's why a small ant picks up a big leaf and a big old caterpillar that eats. That's, that, that's strong. But a Samson was a, a skinny guy, a normal guy. Why do you think people were amazed? You're just a flock of four a dot. You're so skinny and strong. What is it? They wanted to find out. It was in his hair. When they cut his hair, that's when his strength left. Why? It was in his hair. Because he made a covenant. He made a pact with God. Uh, he's, he was called a Nazarene like Jesus. He was a Nazarene. Jesus of Nazareth. A Nazarene covenant is that you, you, when you grow up, you don't drink or you don't cut your hair, according to back then. So that was the covenant. So his strength was not in his hair, it was in God. But that was the key to his strength, the hair. He made a pact with God. You know what, man, I'm only going to serve you. So if you cut his hair, he loses his strength. So then he came to Delilah, his girlfriend, 
Uh, and the other one to know where his strength comes from. But you're so skinny. Why you? Why? Why it comes from? Why are you so strong at the same time? I'm right be with you. And, and you know he want to say it because if you tell somebody your weakness, the devil will attack you there. The devil came on, on Delilah, his girlfriend, to ask him, "Where's your power come from?" Because he wanted to kill him. So when he told her, "Oh, it's my hair," the woman at night sent somebody to come cut his hair when he was sleeping. So they cut his hair, and guess what happened? All his strength is gone. Because he made a pact with God. Same as with us. When you make a pact with God, Jesus, I'm going to accept this, my Lord and Savior. That's a pact of God. Now you're strong. But um, he, he walked there. So, so, so when you break that pact with Jesus through our disobedience, you, it's like you cutting your hair. So all your strength leaves. You have no power over demons, no power over your life. And those things control you instead of you controlling those things. You understand what I'm saying? That's the same path we have got through Jesus. Yes. I have two questions. Two questions, yes. Nice and loud so they can hear you. How can, uh, how can you hear God? How can you hear God? I love it. I love your questions. I love your questions, man. I'm glad you're patient with it. How can you hear God? All right, put it like this. How can you hear your mother? By talking to her. Right. By spending time with her. By recognizing your mother's voice by recognizing your mother's commands correct is, is, is that the truth yeah. Yeah. okay right she, she asked how can you hear God and I asked her how can you hear your mother and she said by 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 um, hearing her voice by you know recognizing her voice when she listens to you for example I don't know her that much right now and if there was another bunch of people here and I, and I would turn around like this and somebody would call my name I wouldn't know who called me why because I don't know I don't know her but I bet you, if I spend at least three minutes talking to her, at least every day or for a little bit, I will recognize her voice. I will know when she's speaking to me. That means when I turn around, I will know her voice when she calls me. So how can we hear God? Don't you want to hear God? Well, I'll be right with you. I'm asking you a question. This is your question. All right? So when you spend time with God through our prayer, communication, prayer is communication, and it's back and forth. You speak, God speaks. God speaks, you speak. You got it? Right now, God's speaking. You know what I mean? So, so you hear God by spending time with Him. That's why when we pray in the morning, our spiritual eyes are open. God is spirit, so now we can be able to see God and also see demons because both spirit is open. The bad and the good. We're gonna be able to recognize. That's how we pray. That's how we spend time. How I get to know Wanda? How I get to know how Wanda got to be my wife by me spending time with her. A lot of time we pray in communication for me getting to know her and her getting to know me. And then you ask her out and marry. Yes. So, you know what I'm saying? So, when you spend time with God, you learn to discern His voice. Because this is what happens. Many people so they know don't say they know God, but they don't really know Him because they don't know His voice. Because Jesus says, Jesus said, my sheep hear me and they know my voice. Are you God's sheep? I, no, this is the problem. Are you letting God pastor you? That's the problem. When you, no, when you let God pastor you, then you're able to hear His voice. You understand what I'm saying? You know what a pastor is? It's a guy, somebody who, who guides the sheep. Remember the one who wolf, I told you? He guides the sheep. So the sheep, the pastor tells the sheep where to go so they can eat grass in the mountains. They know his voice because they spend time every day together. Now, if you spend time with God every day, he's our pastor. He tells us what to do because he's the way, the truth, and the life. He knows us. Give me one second. He knows us. So that's why he said, my sheep know me because they hear my voice. But the point is, you got to let yourself be pastored by the pastors so you can be able to recognize his voice. How can you be pastor by the pastor? Listen, reading his reading what he said. Listen, if you don't read what God said, how can you listen to what he said? That's why you gotta read. This is this is God's love letter saying, Here, get to know me. I love you. I send my son here, get to know me. Open this and you'll know me. And instead of like you know how so most people um they going through something and then the, it's like the first person you think of, that's your God. First person you call upon, that's your God. The first thing you do, that's your God. Before you do anything, go to the Word. It will Amen. guide you. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be something that you be like, wow, that's snub. That's you know, I'm gonna do that. That's like so cool. I most of the times, like most of the times, God tells you to wait. You don't like to wait. We want things microwaved. Right. We want things now. You know, things great things take time. Right. Ask a multimillionaire. You know, you want to be rich, you have to sacrifice. It's gonna cost you. Nothing comes handy. 
you want anointing, you want to be powerful in God, you have to wait. You have to be obedient to His word. Obedience, you know what obedience does? It tells your flesh, it's not now, I'm going to get it, but not now. See, what do you think now? You don't even see virgins around. It takes a girl a while to wait for the right guy. Oh, that takes too long. I'm going to have to wait for the right guy. Oh my God, does he even exist? Were you, do you know you were supposed to be born? No. I'm about to have a child. He doesn't know he's going to be born. He or she. But God knows. But God knows. But guess what? That's the same with the Lord. He knows you well. He's waiting on us to come to him. Direct my steps. I know people that they stay asking other people for advice. I'm like, how can you ask somebody else that's ruined for advice when they don't even they know where they're going? How can you ask a person that's in a bad marriage, help minds? The other day they were saying that it was a testimony. A person, you know, it said, go out. You know, I have experience. I've been married five times. You've been married five times. You have experience. What are you trying to tell me? You think I'm going to get advice from a person who's been married five times? Let me know that you've been married one time with the same woman or man for the, for the rest of your life, and then we're talking. But you've been married five times, and you still don't get it right? Well, that's an issue. I wouldn't even want to hear you anything for one second. That's right. That's Same right. thing with the Lord. Don't even go by people that have been in church for 25 years. But they haven't been one minute in God's presence. They don't know what it means to die to self. They don't know what it means to carry one word and live it. So they're like, oh yeah, go to church. I know scriptures. The devil knows the scriptures better than all of us. That's right. You, uh, honestly, a demon could come up and, 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 trans and basically be somebody. He could read the whole Bible. He could read the whole Bible. He could even translate the whole thing. Demons shake up the presence of God. They even know the power God has. But you know what? Some people are like that. They go to church. Oh, it's a social club. Oh, I go to church. I go to church. They dance to the Lord. It's so cool. They go home. They're demonized. They are possessed. Literally. Because they're not letting the pastor pass at them. You know when you go when you're in school, do you ask permission to go to the bathroom? Yes. Why? Because the teacher is the one taking care of the sheep in class, right? So so, so when, 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 right. So when, when you ask to go to the bathroom, you're asking authority. So no, correct. Give me one second. You gotta know how to behave. So, you, know, behave you, have to listen to you have to listen to so you can learn, right? Listen, then you ask me the question later, okay? So when you ask the teacher to go to the bathroom, she says, okay, go. What happens if you any any decision you want to make in life, you write your pastor, the teacher. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, God, um, can I do this? Can I do that? What do you have for me? And that person will tell you. Because the teacher has the power to tell you yes and to tell you no. Exactly. If you ask God, all the questions that you have, instead of asking somebody dumber than you, or your friends or somebody, ask God first. Because he will guide you to the truth, to the way, and the life. Three words I want you to remember. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Three words I want you to sink in your, in your spirit. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You're lost. He's the way. You don't know the truth. You need facts. The truth. Jesus. You need life. Are you dead? Are you dead in sin? Are you sick or something? You need life in you. Are you bored? Are you angry? The life. Jesus. Three words. The way, the truth, and the life. Grandma. What happened to your grandma? Well, my uncle got arrested, but he's out now. Um, she she was like dying because was like desperate. Okay. So she went to like a witch. Okay. And, and I'm pretty sure she died right after. No, she didn't. When she went to the witch, she she was in a car with her um her comadre. Yeah. And they had they got in a big car accident. Wow. Where she lost all her teeth. Wow. She broke her two bones from here. Wow. And she couldn't talk. She broke her arm. Wow. Her legs. Can we answer that one? Huh? And now she's a little better. She lost all her hair. Okay. Okay. I was on her way to. She was uh, that when she was coming back home. Mm -mm, when she went to the, she when went she went over there. Wow. How you going? But now that he's out, but she never told him what because he didn't want my mom his mom to, to know. Him. Right. So every time he would call, she would be like, "Oh, she's sleeping. She's doing this." Yeah. So she would tell him. Wow, that's that's powerful. And she made a promise to God because she still had her hair, but yeah. she made a promise to God. What was the if, promise? If I if I get better, I'm gonna give you my hair. Okay. So, she, she get better? Got better? She cut all her hair. Okay, well, what did God do with her hair? God doesn't want your hair. You know what God wants? He wants your heart. Not your hair. Because He could do something with your heart. But He can't do nothing with your hair. You get it? So that is something in vain. That's something religion. When He was watching, that's religion. God, I'm going to give you my hair. What am I going to do with your hair? Give me your heart. God wants your heart. I don't want your hair. Give me your this heart. The reason that might have happened to her, it could have been, been an accident, obviously. But it could have been God's will, meaning his purpose. Why? 
So she doesn't make she a pact with fine. the devil. She was fine cleaning her house until they came and got her. Like, oh, you want to go to the witch? Right, but that's what I'm saying. Right, when 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 she was, when, God knew she was gonna go. Basically, for example. Yes. Yes. They saying it's only audio. This new video. There's no video, audio, and video. All right. Can you guys see me? Why not? It's, uh, ask him now again. Can you see me? Hello? Because his audio is there. Tell him to reload it. So it must have made God pray because God knew she was going to make a pact, a covenant with the devil. Remember the covenant that Samson made with God through the hair? She was going to make a pact for what? To get I rich? I it was God or that Santa Maria. God. She does. Santa Maria is not to nothing. She's in heaven with Jesus. She's good. Who's the truth? Who's the word? Who's the life? Exactly. So why you got to speak to Maria? You know what I'm saying? She didn't say I'm the truth. Jesus is the truth one of the life. That's why we pray to Jesus. He's the one that died for us. For our sins, not Maria. That's why we pray to Jesus. We recognize that that's Jesus. Something that's Jesus' told mother. Something not to go. Like, everybody was like, oh, come see me. Guys. Peer home. pressure, right. But, like, there was, there was, um, her mother was like, come, come here. You by doing that, tell me to the witches. Someone will get out of jail faster. But that's, that was, that's the last from the enemy. Because if she would have prayed to God, Father God, take my sin out of jail, God would have probably taken him out of jail after his due time, at his due time. But she wanted to do it faster, not in God's time. She probably wanted to... She didn't want to do it. Exactly, but she, but she still did it. She still went. Those are the demons in those people that told her, come on, let's go to the witch. Because they know if she goes to God, the sun is getting out. She wants you, God wants you to, Satan wants you to serve him and not God. That's what she and did. And, that. and you see the girl that took her mm -hmm. She, I think she didn't learn because her parents, they died by going to a witch in a car accident. Exactly. So when you go to a witch, that's what happens. That's what happens. When you go to a witch, that's what happens. Yeah. What do you think witches always die a, die of a disease or cancer or something like that? Because they go up on those demons. They're opening those. It's like, it's like witches. witches. It's called false. So they want, they do, they, they do my dance. Exactly. So they get those same my dance to them. Whatever the bad they do, they come to them. Yes. Yes, give me the first one. Let me answer it first, right? See how much you girls know about witchcraft, man. You guys know much about God like that. You guys really. I'm going to play what, for you tonight. Where, where um, does the witch live? Uh, witches live everywhere. everywhere. When I speak bad to you, that's witchcraft. When I curse you, that's witchcraft. So, and the, the crazy thing that witches like. Yeah, but it's right. Um, when you go to. When, when when you go to hell, what, what does the devil do to you? Oh, uh, nothing, because you're already there. What he's done to you now is doing stuff like witchcraft, so you don't go to heaven. So you can go to hell. Once you're there, he don't care no more. It says that you're going to be in the lake of fire. You know when you get burned in the stove? And it hurts, right? You're going to feel that for the rest of your life, for eternity. You're going to feel that same pain. What's the next question? What's your next question? Uh, how, how can you see that, that God loves you? How can you see that God loves you? Go to John 3.16. Right? What it says. You're breathing? God loves, God loves you. you. Are you eating food every day? What? John 3, 16. Are you eating food every day? God loves you. Are you here? Are you safe? Are you okay in protection? Are you scared? No? God loves you. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's simple. Jesus, people try to see Jesus like in crazy ways. No, Jesus is here. We can see Jesus through. He's through your love. 316, right? 316, yeah. Let's see what God, let's see what God says again. Kids, man, but they're teaching us at the same time. Are we there? <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoy yourself. You know, God bless you. If you have any questions, just text us at 646-248-2589. John 3.16, read it. No, that's this. No, read it. What's that? No, that is John. The book of John. I'm going to get it for you. John, right? Joel, before Romans. No, John, right before Romans. Before John 3.16. Right. Three. I want you to read it out loud. Um, 316 right there. Read it out loud. What was your question first? Uh, Does God love us? How do, no. we know, how do we know that God loves us? The one that has the, like, the orange. Yes, read it. you got to find out how you know that God loves you. Read, yeah. read it out loud. Well, read, it, read, it, read it out loud. We, we want to hear you. Yeah. No, I'm scared of what? Don't be scared. Jesus is here. Read it out loud. Read it. You want me to read it for you? So read it. Come on, read it. Matter of fact, read it for yourself. So yeah, guys. Um, um. Wow. So many questions, man. But I love it. I love the question because it brings it brings something out of you. You know what I'm saying? And you know, this is a simple question that we Christians don't even know. You believe that? 
simple question that we Christians have been trying to church don't even know. Because they don't yeah. ask because they're prideful that they think they know. But you you don't know nothing. Ask. And we shall receive. Do it. Yes, we read out loud. Thank you. For God so loved the world and he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have that's your answer, right? That's your question. How do you know that God loves you? Well, I, I, he, loved you he loved us so much that He gave His only Son, Jesus, to die for us. That's how much He loves us. Will you give Jesus to die for somebody? Exactly. But He loved us so much that He gave His Son. Period. That's it. You know what I mean? His so, Son? His Son, Jesus. He gave His only Son. His only Son. Not that He has sent His only Son to die for us. You understand that? You know, we know that that's why we're so grateful about God, and that's why we appreciate God so much, because He gave His only Son for us, and He saved us. You know what I mean? That's why. Let me see what other questions. Go ahead, think. It's questions. You want to have questions here? <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, we have to be careful as uh, mature Christians, as uh, new believers, whatever, not to let any enemy come in our lives, through our eyes, through our ears, or through stupidity, basically, that we do. Okay. Give me one second, answer right now. So we have to be careful. How can we see God's power? We gotta shut those doors. We gotta turn away from our sins. Always say so. Does God approve of what I'm doing? WWJD. What would Jesus do? Today my job I was being really, really hassled by my higher ups. I was hassled. Yeah, but I said, right. what would Jesus do? Jesus would Jesus wouldn't get mad and say pray. Jesus would have slapped them or cursed them. What did I do? I obeyed. I, I was I was obedient. Because I'm with Jesus by my side. Because the Bible says when you do something, it's not for them, it's for Jesus Himself. So I say, you know what I'm going to do it? Maybe not for you, but for Jesus, I'm going to do it. So the submission to authority. Amen? And when you're under submission to authority, that's when God places you in authority. You know what I'm saying? When you obey somebody, you respect somebody, you then will be placed in authority. But you can't disrespect people and, and, and disobey people, even cops, your mother, parents, teachers, anybody. God and, and be expect to be in authority and in, in power. That's not gonna happen. It's an order that God did. God said you want to be first, you want to be the greatest, you first gotta serve everybody so you could be the greatest. Jesus is the greatest. Why? Because he didn't come here to the world's, the world's greatest. I mean, mighty God. Why is the greatest? Because it says in the Bible, and you can see it clearly uh, that he came to serve us. He didn't came because he could have said, yo, give me that, give me that, you die for us. You know why? You know, you do things for me. He didn't do that at all. He, he led by thing. example. Jesus led by example, exactly. He was, you know, he came to serve us. Well, that's the thing, and, and, and you see that a lot. It's like, um, how can I say I see you, I see your hands. It's like, it's like with Louis and I, like, we came, like, you know, Louis was born and, and raised in a Christian home. Got to know Jesus two years ago, really. You know, I came to the Lord through Revelation. And, and God has promised so many things, right? And it's like, for, for instance, we know what we're going to be, let's say, in three years from now. And the position God is going to give us of authority, right? So then right now, imagine if we take all that pride and we just start stepping down people. Or, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be hiding. You know, I'm going to be more anointed. Why would I want to listen to you? Imagine Jesus. He already knew what was going to happen. He already knew who was going to fail him. Who was going to cheat on him. Who was going to betray him. He already knew who was going to, like, basically be there for him. Who's going to be a true disciple? He knows it all. But then he said, you know what? Let me be humble. The word of God says, when we are humble, the Lord exalts us. Amen. When we exalt ourselves, God will humble us. God will humble us through lots of crisis. Situations in Christ. Because what he will do is, he will bring so much, so much. He will break you in pieces that the repentance will come out of you. That's why when you see evil, evil people are mess. And I tell people, even if you're in church and you're going through a hard time, you know, just rely on the Lord. Don't be evil to others. It breaks my heart when I see people just doing, be, do, be so injustice because you have a certain title, because you have a certain authority that God has given you by grace. You take advantage Not of because you deserve it, because we know this, we deserve death. You know what I mean? But by His grace, He's been so loving. But we want to take that authority and just break people's head off. What is wrong with you? You just know where you came out from and what God did to you. And go back to that state of mind. People need you out there. You know what I mean? And, and that's that's God's grace. Like, that's why his love is so overwhelming. We will never understand it. We just we get a glimpse of it. We don't even know. I mean, God's love is amazing. So, I mean, he so loved us. We know that he gave his only, only begotten son. I mean, he's amazing. Oh, do you see my grandma? 
Yeah, well, listen, I'm sorry. I'm my grandma, head. she never had faith in God, my okay. grandma. And, and my, her daughter, she did. But my other, like, my grandma and her grandma, she, she, she believed in God, but like, she didn't have faith in God. But she had cancer, and, like, she would pray. Like, she won't pray, but, like, she would pray at times. Yeah. Because you feel better, and, like, it got worse. So my grandma, since she had faith in her, like, she would go to church every day. Yeah. And then until they called my grandma, and then, like, she's cancer free. Why? Because her gra or your other grandmother had faith. So, so you said to yourself, you said people believe in Jesus, but they don't have faith. It's a difference. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you have faith? Yes. Right. So you gotta have faith because you could believe. It's okay. You believe. Many people believe in Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. But do you have faith in Him and what because He did to us? They, they say that um, Brando Figueroa. I don't know who this is. Brando Figueroa. God bless you, brother. He says, "What does the Bible say about?" Um, horoscope and astrology. What does the Bible say about horoscope and astrology? You can turn your Bible to Ezekiel 23, 13. Ezekiel 23, 13. It speaks about like the bandits that we wear of, of, of witchcraft and stuff like that. Also in Isaiah, I'm going to have to Google I forgot the verse in Isaiah that speaks about witchcraft. Um, I get it right now actually. Uh, what's my other Bible? Can we get my other Bibles over there? So, but what does God say about our horoscopes? Well, you think about this, Brendan. Um, that's a great question. You know, let me see my face. That's a great question, Brendan. He sees the video now. Oh, you see the video? Good. Why? I'm a, this is a great question. I love this question. Wait. Why does God think about horoscopes? The thing that you read in the newspaper that tells you who you're supposed to see today, that tells you how you're going to feel today, that tells you, oh, today you're going to meet a man. Oh, you're Scorpio. You cannot mix with the Leos. Think about the source, Brendan, where that comes from. What does the source of the Bible... Uh, give me ask this question. You got what does the source of the Bible come from? It comes from, it comes from God. It comes from God. Amen? So I know it's the truth. Now, the source of horoscopes and witchcraft and other sorcery, where does it come from? It comes from an occult. It comes from the power of God. It comes from Satan. Because that's trying to guess your life, but God already got purpose for you. God already got a destiny for you. So when you read a horoscope, you're not trusting in God's word. You're trusting in, in, in the saint, in Satan's word. You're not having faith by the word of God. You're having fear by horoscopes. And people always think it's okay. But think about it. First of all, there's a man that I bet you has so many problems, probably sick of something, or has cancer or something, that's telling you how to feel, brother. Imagine that. A man that writes it down. Or Miss Cleo, or the, the, the guy that comes in Channel 47, that he says now, the, the daily horoscope. Somebody got to write that. Now, what, the person who wrote that, where does that person get it from? What is the source? What is the source? Always think about what's the source. What's the source? What's the motivation at? And that's what horoscopes is about, because God doesn't like witchcraft and idolatry and horoscopes. Amen? <coughs> I'm going to look it up now so you can read in the book of Isaiah. <laughs> Another question? Give me answer the question first. Give me one second. Go ahead, um, When the Bible says that... When the Bible says that Jesus took the keys of hell from Satan, what does that mean? When the Bible says that Jesus took the keys of hell from Satan, what does that mean? Well, guess what? Before Jesus came, Satan had the power. Satan had all the power. Death. He had the power of death. He killed any people whenever he basically wanted. He had the power of death. So when people, even from Adam and Eve, when people died, they went to Hades, not hell. Hell is where it's hot. Hades is where, you know, you, you got it? Good, good. We're going to read it now. So anyway, um, he has the power of key, the, the, of life and death and the keys and the, and the I'm sorry. Satan had the power of hell, which is life and death, and of, um, of hell. Life and death and hell, two different things. So he could bring anybody to who he wants. And the power of life and death to kill you, to do things to you. But when Jesus died, and said that God made a spectacle of his enemies. God took those keys back from hell. He said that he, like Jonah lasted three days in the belly of the beast, of the whale. God lasted three days in hell. Why he was doing in hell? Why was Jesus doing three days in hell? Well, he could have just resurrected the, the, the next morning. Well, there was searching him. Remember that there was an accuser. Jesus was a holy man. He didn't sin that even once. So what the demons were doing was searching sin in him, looking for something to accuse them. So they could blame him. Because if Jesus would have sinned, God would have never resurrected him. But but since he never sinned, 
His light, His holiness was so much that hell couldn't resist Him. Not even death could resist Him. Satan is death. Death is Satan. Not even Satan or death could resist Him. So God resurrected Him. He took Him out of hell. And then when He left, He said, You know what? Since I beat you in your own game, I take back my keys of life and death because God has the, the authority of life and death. And I take back the keys of hell. Nobody shall enter hell unless I send them to hell. And that's the, if I, you know, if I, if, I hope I answer the question good. If not, we can speak about it and go more in detail some other time. But that's what it means by that. And I'm still looking for, for about the horoscope stuff in Isaiah. Yes, go ahead. What's your question? Why, why did God want to make it? Why did God want to make us? It's funny, we spoke about that in class two Sundays ago. You were there. Why did God want to make human beings? That's an interesting question, right? God, why you make human beings? Well, this is what. God is a king, right? So there was the king and his throne. Remember, God always was. So imagine, if you close your eyes, you could do this if you want. You know, I could, this is a prophetic experiment. I could a prophetic experiment. Close your eyes, everybody. You can't close your eyes for one second. Just listen up. Close your eyes and think of God in His throne, His beautiful throne, like the Bible describes, all fluorescent, all rainbow behind them. The streets are made of gold and, and rubies and sapphire. Imagine God on the throne. He is the king. So He says, You know what? I'm a king. How can I spread my kingdom? Remember when, when, when Romans used to take over a country, they planted a governor in that country. And they spread the kingdom throughout that governor. They spread the laws of that kingdom. So it's like, you want to grow in territory, which is what God wanted to do. He said, wait a minute, I want to spread my kingdom. I got it. Let me make earth. Let me put humans, let me breathe my spirit into them. So they can spread kingdom. That's why it says in Genesis 128, that we are made, in the, 126, that we are made in his image and his likeness. And that in Genesis 128 says that he has given us power, dominion, over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the beasts of the land. He gives power, dominion, and authority. What happened is that when Adam sinned, we sinned. So we lost that power, that covenant. Because we sinned, we were rebellious against God. So we lost that power. So that's why God wanted to reintroduce the kingdom of God, of himself, throughout Jesus. That's why Jesus came, to connect us back to the Father. And now when we connect to the Father through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we have the power and the dominion of our lives, of ourselves. The dominion to say no to drugs, the power to say no to, to alcohol, the power to say no to sin. We have the power. Before, sin had that power. That's why he had the keys to hell, hell and the life of death. But when Jesus came to reintroduce the kingdom of God, we took the, the keys back. Ain't God good? Yeah. <laughs> God is great. Amen? Yes. Wait, I got one more question. How, how can we feel God? How can we feel God? We can feel God by being obedient to Him. You can feel God by your mother loving you. Wherever there's love, God is there. Do you feel loved? So God is there. Now you can feel God's presence when we worship, when we in the Spirit. But for that, I said I'm into such and a lot of discerning because you got to discern when God is there or discern when evil is there. That's how you feel God's presence. Many people go to church, but they never felt God's presence before. Why? Because they don't have intimacy with Him. They don't pray to Him. They don't intercede. They don't seek Him. So they don't ever feel His presence. Why people go to church and always keep sinning and always leave out too? Because they never seen the power of God really. They never felt His presence. Because once you feel His presence, it's, it's, it's amazing. The Lord, when the fear of the Lord, because people say, Oh, fear, oh my God. Should I really be scared of God? No, not really. But the thing is, it's a fear which is it's more a fear of reverence. Amen. Fear of the Lord means to, to, to hate evil. That's what it says. Fear of the Lord means to hate evil. That's what it basically means. All right, Brandon, I got your question. Um, Brandon Figueroa, about a strategy in horoscope. Also, if you're listening, look it up. You can Google it if you don't have a Bible. Go to the book of Isaiah, um, chapter 47, verse 13 and up. Isaiah, chapter 37, verse 13 and up. And it speaks about horoscopes and about sorcery and about people who read the stars. That's what it's about. Sorcery and horoscopes, people who read the stars. I repeat, Isaiah chapter 47, verse 13 and up, and you're going to read about it, amen? Um, Next question. You, you got a question? I you got want to spirit you want to ask? Anything like you want to just report? Or everything's being answered? Okay, good, good, good. Amen. Good, I'm glad. Let me know if you have any questions. Yes, more questions, right? Let's see some of the text in a minute. All right, brothers, keep texting the question. Keep coming. How can you know that God is forgiving? How can you, wow, her question is amazing. Oh my Jesus. She said, how can you know that God has forgiven you? You 
know that God's forgiven you throughout the country. Well, God always loves you. But you know He has forgiven you because you feel in your spirit. You feel at peace. When you feel peaceful, God has forgiven you. If you did something bad and you say, God, forgive me, Jesus, because I, I screamed at my mother because I, I was disobedient today or this week or last month, forgive me. You're going to feel a sudden peace in your heart that God will forgive you. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel joyful again. And when you feel that joy and happiness, God has forgiven you. Amen. And God will always forgive you for anything you do wrong. But always remember to keep turning away from the wrong things that you do. So when you pray, you're going to feel a sudden peace that just comes upon you, a happiness, a joy. God forgive me, you're going to feel that. Might not be at the moment. Because why? Because there's two voices fighting. The voice, the spirit that God says, you're forgiven, and the enemy's voice, which is the devil saying, you're not forgiven. So the devil just put guilt in you. You just put guilt in you. He's trying to make you feel guilty that what you did, and try to accuse you. So don't listen to that voice. God always forgives you. Listen to that, you're forgiven, and be happy, and receive it by faith. What do they mean? Like, I'll put that God's grace? What do you mean? I put that in God's grave? What do you mean? Like, my mom, she me when she gets mad. She swears, right? Yeah. No, and she, like, she's like, she's like, um, I put that on you. Okay, this, this is what happened. She said that somebody in the family, they swear. When they get mad and they want to, like, let people know that they tell the truth, they swear. They be like, I swear to my father, I swear to my mother, or I swear to my dead brother, or my dead uncle. Why do they do that? That's bad. The Bible says not to swear. That's one of the, that's, the, that's I think the third or second commandment. Thou should not swear. Yeah, um, my mom um, told Exodus 22. Me, my mom told me to not swear, and she said, she, and she does it when I don't do it. Right, but she does it, but she needs to know that, that that's bad. Right? So she needs to ask for forgiveness. God forgive me. And we need to ask God, please take that away from my mouth. So, so, so when I do something bad, she hits me and like Xavier or her or someone else that she knows does something Because he's like, baby, he doesn't know. She said that how come her mother hits her, for example, disciplines her, that's the word, disciplines her when she does something bad. When her little brother does something bad, her mother doesn't hit him or disciplines her, for example. The reason why is because he's innocent. He doesn't know better, but you know better. Let me see that. Um, uh, no, Exodus. Look for Exodus. Exodus 22. Okay. She'll be surprised. Hey, I know, I know. Right, so that's the difference. So, so what happens when we do bad? God disciplines us. <laughs> and that's, you know, when you love your child, you discipline your child. So that's why sometimes we go through the hardships. God is disciplining us. Yeah, so we can run character. Wait, Amen? And you know, learn your faith how to move forward. You got something further you want to say? Anything you want to share? Anything? Keep it going, keep it going. Uh, any like any more questions? You wrote the questions? Okay, yeah. Uh, Brandon, keep sending the questions, brother. Um, Can I make my explanation? Yeah, look for it. Exodus 22. Look for the Ten Commandments. Exodus 22. Read it. All right, you can read it. Well, it says, yeah. that's enough. Well, let her read it. Maybe she needs to read it for herself. Yeah. Exodus is the, is, the sec, is the second book, chapter 22. Uh -huh. Right, guys, if you're watching, you have any, I guess today's question day, if you have any questions about Jesus, okay, about whatever, give me one second. Any questions, just text us. Write down the number. You ready? Pull out your phone. Watching, let us know that you're watching. Yeah, let us know you're watching. Like, hey, it's me, whatever, I'm watching, or whatever. You don't have to send your name if you don't want to. Just send a question to phone number 646-248-2589. Now, repeat. Send the questions to 646-248-2589. 25, 89. We'll ask you a question. Amen? Okay. Right. So she's going to read um, Exodus 22. Read the first. Is, is it? Let me see if it's not, not the right one. I think it's like, the ten, Exodus 20. The ten this is a very good question. What's the question? Um, he said, um, I mean, no disrespect or sarcasm when I ask this, but I just went on ba baffling like this or like this. Since God already knows everything and he knows who he is, who's going to heaven, who's going to hell. Since he created and already knew those who would accept him, does that mean he intentionally created those that wouldn't accept him? Meaning that he created those that would go to hell? No, never that. You have, it's a free will. Wait, can you, uh, I want you, can I read the question out so somebody can hear it? Maybe they didn't hear it because it's probably low. Right, I'm, so I'm going to read the question out loud. He's saying that if God created everything, he knows everything. How come I'm going to read the question that you just said. Um, I mean, no disrespect or sarcasm when I ask this. I've just been battled by this. Since God already knows everything, 
he knows who is going to heaven and who is going to hell. Since he created, already knew those who will accept him, does that mean he intentionally created those that wouldn't accept him? Meaning that he created those that will go to hell? No. When Judas betrayed Jesus, he went to hell. Why? Why did Judas, thank you, sir. Why did Judas want to hell when he betrayed Jesus? Sit down, sweetie. Okay. The problem is that he betrayed Jesus. Right, but he went to hell. But why did Judas want to hell? Judas went to hell, even though he was predestined already for him to betray Jesus because Jesus, the prophecy for Jesus had to be fulfilled, so he needed a betrayer, and God chose Judas to fulfill God's purpose. But why did Judas go to hell? Because he didn't repent. Judas never, never repented. He went back and, and threw the 30 pieces of silver that he took from, from the Pharisees and gave it back to them. So he recognized that he did something wrong. He recognized, you know, I did something wrong. I, I, I killed the innocent man. And he threw the, the money back to the Pharisees because, you know, they paid him to, to give up Jesus. But he did not repent. When God sees true repentance, you're forgiven. So I take you to this day now that Judas would have been in, hell, in heaven right now if he would have repented. But it said that he committed suicide. He hung himself. He felt the guiltiness of the devil when he came into him. He had a chance to repent because he knew the Savior Jesus came here as the Son of God. If not, he wouldn't have betrayed the Son of God if he didn't know he was the Son of God. But the thing is that he never repented. So when we do something wrong, you recognize you did something wrong. But repentance is a different thing. We need to repent. God ask for forgiveness. Remember that when he was in the supper in the den of Judas with them, Jesus made the covenant already. He said, this is the bread, this is my life. And this is the, the wine, the, the, the blood, my covenant that I made with you. So, and it was after that that Judas betrayed him. And Judas knew how to escape that. But he still betrayed him. So he knew, but he still betrayed him. Yes. That was when, like, you in church, you drink something, they put something white in your mouth. Okay, well, she's talking about when you in church, I guess um, that when you drink something, put something white in your mouth. The reason why we, why we do that in church, because Jesus said that. Before he was being killed, before he was in the supper, that, that picture that you see in the house, that people draw, he was in a supper with disciples. So Jesus ate bread and, and drank wine. He said, this is the bread represents my life. And the wine represents the, the blood, the covenant, my blood that I shed over you. Amen? To protect you, to, to heal you, to bring you back from, from death. So Jesus said, do this, what I do in remembrance of me until I come back. That's why he said, Remem remembrance of what? Of the covenant, of the pact, the treaty that he made with us. Meaning, drink my blood. Every day I drink Jesus' blood. Not literal, but be like, Jesus, cleanse me with your blood. Cleanse me of all, 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 all um, deceitfulness, of all um, holiness. Cleanse me. And I'm being cleansed of the covenant. Now, Judas could have been cleansed because he was in the table when Jesus made the promise. But he didn't because he didn't repent. I hope I answered the question. Amen. Well, send another question. But um, that's why. So we need to, when you do something bad, you're like, God, forgive me. Repent. Because you know you did something bad. You know you did it on purpose. When, you know, when we were talking about earlier, you never do things on purpose. You know, sometimes you put your feet, somebody could fall on purpose. But you just laugh. <laughs> that's evilness. Because you're plotting. You, you're plotting evil. But if you do, then you know what? I think that was evil. I repent. And God will forgive you. Not only that. When people put, like, when like, you hate, you have, like, so much hate on them. Like they could be drinking something, they could walk away. And yeah. Something. She got. She's talking. Huh? Right. That's evil. Right. That's evil. 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 That's Yes. What's your question? Say it out loud so they can hear you. How can you see that someone's jealous of you? How can you see that someone? Yes. She she asks. How can you see that someone's jealous of you? That's a great question, man. Well, you can't really you can't really the person would. Well, I'm asking half of it, but how can you see if someone's jealous of you? First, if you in Christ, the discernment, the way they act towards you, right? What they say, what they do. But the truth is, the person will not be set free till it comes out that person's mouth. That they are jealous of you. You get it? Yep. 
Can you read that for for what it says? The doctrine of swear. It says in Exodus 20, 20 verse seven. Doctrine of swear. Can I read something? Oh, hold up, we're cheating. Um, so so right. So um, can guys, I read? any questions, guys? Any? Are you ready, Ryan? No, it's. Psalm 88. Psalm 88? Joseph is. Put it up, please. Which part? What do we read? 8, 7. Can I read this stuff? Yes, give me one second. Um, uh, oh, oh, it's pretty long, but you want to tell me the part or where I can break it down for them? But I want them to hear it also. Alright, tell me the first one you have of what part, and we're going to go over it. Um, so yeah, guys. Um, um, what I want to do is um. I have. It's only nine thirty-four, so I'm just going to wrap it up at ten, right? Um, no, we're gonna wrap it up at ten. Exactly. Yeah. Of what we talking about, and then we're gonna leave? keep talking if you guys want. You know what I'm saying? Which but um, we're leaving at ten. Wait, give me a second. Yeah, we're leaving at ten. So guys, any other question? We gotta. We are about to pray right now, man. And any question, please send them any now. Prayer we have any prayer requests? If you have a prayer request, please speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> And man, if you want me to pray for anything specific, send it over, brother. God is here. We're going to pray. And we believe that when we pray, God listens. And by faith, he's going to do what we ask him. Because God said, ask and you shall receive. Not, and the door shall be open. Seek, and you shall find. Juan is watching from Philadelphia. Uh, God bless you, Juan, from Philadelphia. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us, brother. We see you. God bless you, man. Any questions you have, we'll be more than willing to answer. Amen? Can I read it now? What you want to read? No, give it to her. I want her to read it. It's okay. We know it. No, I'm reading aloud. No, no, no. Oh, it's for yourself. Please. You know? Yeah, yeah. All right, so. Wait. Wait. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I want her to read it. Yeah, I want her to read it. Right. So, guys, you know, what we've been talking about today is uh, I spoke about the kingdom of light, kingdom of darkness, demons. How do demons come into you? How do you allow demons to control your life? And how do you allow God to control your life? I like what, what witchcraft and sorcery and horoscope, which is wrong. You can read the book of Isaiah, chapter 47, verse 13 and up. It speaks about horoscopes and all that stuff. And people who read the moons and the stars. We also spoke about how you heal God. We should go deeper into that. You know, that's the last week of the preaching. How do you heal God? And we spoke that how you heal God is by spending time with Him. And the more you spend time with Him, the more you recognize His voice by prayer, by reading His word. But you cannot hear God unless you know His Word. So we need to constantly stay in the Word of God. So when He speaks to us, He we know it's Him. We need to know the Word of God. We need to maintain in faith the Word of God. Amen? We need to educate ourselves. We go to school to learn. What do we go to church for? To learn. Amen. So when we go to church, open up your ears to learn. And you believe by faith while you receive it. Amen? How, how can you take the demon out of you? How can you take a demon out of you? You, re, you can Read renounce... Read the Bible. No. Lord. That's a way to learn how to take it out. But it's not going to come out by the Bible. Um, um, word that it's by you. God's word. Yes. They kill, they kill by God. saying it. By believing and saying it. You can take out a demon how? By but having. The demon hates it. Right. By, by, you can take out a demon by having faith, by having the power to take him out. And God gave him the power. That I want you to read Luke 10 17. How? By doing something the demon hates. No. Like this. You take out a demon. But you bothers him. Let me ask you a question, guys. You take out a demon by you renouncing. For example, I said that pornography is a demon because it's keeping you there in tune to that and, it make, and it's making you sin. Right? Because you watch pornography and it makes you want to have sex. And you shouldn't have sex before marriage or you should not have committed adultery, for example. For example, that's a demon, which it is. So when you allow a demon in you, you got to block him. So you got to stop watching pornography and say this. I renounce all power of sexual morality. I renounce the power of sexual desire. I renounce all demons of pornography. In the name of Jesus, amen. In the name of Jesus, because only the name of Jesus has power to take out the demon, not you. You, 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 you got to ask that for the power to not watch pornography. I say, God, you know, help me. I don't want to watch that. And you renounce the demons from the side. You take my yourself. In the name of Jesus, I renounce all spirit of lust. And that demon will come out. You don't believe it. You don't know that you never. You don't have the desire to watch porn because the demon put the desire to watch porn. For example, you get it. So it's not that we're anything. What is that? that we're cursing. What is that? When we're angry, we're resentful, we're forgiveness, we're anything. What is that? For? What? We're gonna speak about that later. What's your question? You see the Jews. The Jews. The Jewish people. Yes. How like? Why? Why did everything happen? 
Why they don't they have believe, it? They believe in God. Okay, let me ask you a question first. She, she said, what about the Jewish people? How did everything happen and did they believe in God? This is the problem. When God made people, Adam and Eve, a generation kept going. And he picked out of all the people in the world, uh, for example, out of the Chinese, out of the Dominicans, uh, out of the African Americans, out of the Hindu people, out of the whatever people, he chose to pick the Jewish people. Why? He was pleased with it. He chose them for his own reasons. He yeah. said, you will be my people and I will be your God. So they did believe in God. They believed in God and they saw the power of God. Yes. Uh, Come back to me. Think about it. <laughs> right. So in two minutes, I'm going to pray. So please yeah. send in your prayer request. Two minutes, I'm going to end this. I'm going to pray. Oh, okay. I also let them know about the, um, about the conference night that we have going on. Well, okay. we're interested. Okay. We have the morning that we pray okay. every night. So, okay, guys, how we start? Okay, give me a second. How we started talking is about prayer and intercession. How to get close to God through prayer. And what we do, guys, we we wake up at three o'clock every morning and we pray. We call each other to an intercession line. It's a phone number that you call and, and you enter a code, or you can just text us and we pray. Amen. And, and, and we grow and pray through there, and God listens when we pray. Tell me, I know a lot of testimony that has happened to us already. So we grow in God when we pray and wake up at 3 in the morning. Why at 3 in the morning? Because that's when Jesus did it. That's when the windows of heaven open. And we got to pray to God at that moment, for example, because a special window opens of grace and favor. So if you want to join us through prayer in line, in line, or you want to request any special prayer for your mother who's sick, for your grandmother, or for you to get closer to Jesus, or whatever you desire, we can pray for you, we can pray together, and all you got to do is call us. So write down this number so we can text you the number that we... Talk throughout, and the number what is six four. Yeah, yes. three o'clock in the morning. It's tough, I know. God says that the, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. You know, it, it, it's it's the covenant that you're making of God. How much do you want God to hear your prayer? Is it enough for you to work? Is it that important for you to wake up three o'clock in the morning? Well, let's do it. I mean, you go to clubs and you go to clubs at three o'clock in the morning. You still love, right? You do certain things at three o'clock in the morning. Why can you pray to God at three o'clock in the morning? Period. So write down this number so you could call us. And text us so we can give you the number that you're supposed to call so we can pray. The number is 646-248-2589. 646-248-2589. Now I want to pray for everybody here and everybody over there. Last question. How can you see that someone loves you? How can you see that someone loves you and cares for you? By the way they act. By the way they act towards you. By what they give you. What? Read. All right. Read. All right. I want you to read. This is homework. I want you to find out for yourself. I want you to read 1 Corinthians 13. All right, look it up now if you want for yourself. All right, guys. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, guys, I want to I want, I want pray. Um, that's, that's different requests, so. um, any other questions? Any more requests for prayers? Well, I watching. I think text. Guys, you can text us now. 646-248-2589. Um, right down the top. 1 Corinthians. You ready, ready? Okay. I'm going to pray for this one. And then, um, I guess you can pray. Okay. I, I tell you guys, let me finish first. Um, so, guys, any, any prayer requests? Anything you want me to pray for specific? Anything, you know? I want you to pray for Okay. Okay. Amen. No, Amen. Um, <laughs> but, but the truth is, remember? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, anything, if, you don't have to tell us, but if, if you tell us, it kind of be better that way I can know what to hit, if that's okay with you. Okay. Okay, I will. Amen. I will. And I believe you're gonna heal in the name of Jesus. Uh, any prayer thing you want me to pray for? Uh, I just wanna keep going in way doing the need of the my Lord. Amen. You wanna do as well. Amen. Yeah, it's for every day. That's what I need. Amen. I need okay, amen. Amen. And what do you want me to pray for this others? What do you want me to pray for? What do you want? What do you need? And I'll pray for that. I want my mom. Okay, what do you want? I want Okay, she wants her mom to give birth already. And I'm going to pray so your mom to give a healthy birth. Amen? And you pray, what about you? I want to. You can think about it. You, you don't want to. Wait, I'm finished. Go and tell her 
Oh, God. She wants to finish school and talk about her future. I want you to... Ah, I got one. Yeah, go ahead. I want to get to stop cursing. You want to stay with stop cursing? Stop cursing and my mom stop cleaning. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to pray for that, man. That so, means you're going to be more That means you're going to be more all right, so we're going to pray. Guys, anything, please send your prayer request now because I believe God is here and I believe God is going to heal people here. I believe God is going to change hearts and renew minds and heal hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen? So um, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for Jefferson. And, baby, we're going to pray for their request online, okay? Yes, they say the one, one prayer at 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, 926. Give me a Is second. it a personal choice or is a meaning behind it? Um, it's a meaning behind praying, uh, praying from 3 Jesus to 6 o'clock in the morning because... That's the time that Jesus went to the mountain to pray all the time. That's the, like I said, it's a, like, it's a window of heaven that opens specifically for that for those prayers at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's when Jesus did it, and we got to model Jesus because he did it, and it worked. Amen. Notice that whenever Jesus came from the mountain praying at 3 o'clock in the morning, he came, he came down the mountain, then he came to Revelation teaching, preaching, healing people, and casting out demons. So he goes to the mountain to pray to God, to seek the presence of God, and to hear from God. That's when God speaks. He speaks all the time, but he specifically speaks for that time, amen? So, you got to know that when he prays that time, you got to, you know, your day's got to go better. You got to receive, you know, healing, revelation, and everything else. There's a meaning behind it. And I'm going I'm to do a, a preaching just on that, amen? And I'm going to give you the scriptures from that. If you want to just Google this, Jesus is praying at the mountain, and a lot of us are going to come out, amen? So now let's pray. Um, you want me to start? Yes, I'm going to want to start, amen, amen. So just, you know, just be in accordance with us, amen, and, you know, receive. Come on, come on, sit down. I, I want to read it. Oh, we're going to read it when we finish. Come on, sit down. No, the, the where in the Bible can I find that? I'm going to look it up for you right now, amen. Why don't you text me your number, and I'm going to text you the Bible verse. Okay, what Brandon. Get? Oh, it's Brandon, okay. Jesus always prayed in the Mount of Olives. Google this, because right now I don't have it in my reach. Jesus prays in the Mountain of Olives. Or oh, just write, Jesus prays in the Mountain. And a lot of verses are going to come out on Google. And you're going to notice where it says that he always came down from the mountain. And then he um, and then he preached, taught, cast out demons, and healed people. Amen? Amen. So, um, go ahead, baby. You can stop praying. Okay, let's bow our heads, guys. Bow our heads, you close your eyes. And see no. Jesus in your mind. See him. No. Um, the phone. So, you could concentrate. Like, put the phone out. You know, so you no, concentrate. No, just take the phone away. Oh, that's that's better about that. But I trust you, though. So, you'll be right there. Okay. Guys, while I had some, Father God, we thank you for this night, O oh Lord, and we honor you, God, and thank you for everyone that's tuned in tonight, my God. I know that you're doing great things in their life, Lord. We declare a year, my God. It's, I mean, I know we're, we're a few months away from ending the year, but basically this is 2013. It's a year of basically of what's starting for 2014 because this has been a year of selection, Father God. Yes, and we yes. thank you for that, Father God. We thank you for those lives that are tuning in that they have basically made this commitment to you to stay tuned in for a few hours, listening about you, Father God, and I know you've been transforming, Father God. Amen. On this hour, Lord, we, we pray for Juan's family and, and his brother, Father God. He's uh, about to be a father, Lord, and he's still running the streets. But God, and we pray that you know, just put the desire in his heart, God, to put his family first. So, Lord, yes, as we my pray, God. my God, that you just bring deliverance to his life, my God, to his mind, wherever he's at now, Father God. We pray, my God, that the Holy Spirit just give him conviction and bring repentance in his heart of following you, Father God, and, and salvation comes close to his life, O oh Lord. And he's able to give his life to, to you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, because I know that miracle is going to be done in the name of Jesus, Father God. Amen. Father Amen. God, we pray for Brandon's family, Lord. We pray that you bring unity in that family, Father God. We, we cancel all strife, my God, or fights, my God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we declare freedom in their minds, my God. And we declare that your power, my God, will bring them together, Lord. That they be able to spend time together, Lord, and read your word together, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Jesus, my God. We come on once again in your presence, my God. We thanks, honor, and glory, my God. My God, we have faith in you, my God. We trust you and believe in you, my God. Because you have the power, my God, and the authority, my God. Because you have died for us, my God, resurrected, my God. And I believe that we have the same power of resurrection, my God, that you live, my God. My God, I'm going to pray for Joseph, my God, that you bless him, my God. Lift him up, my God. Reveal something to him more every day, my God. He desires to know you more and to do your will, my God. My God, I pray that you put a more desire in his heart, my God, to keep serving me, my God, faithfully in the name of Jesus, my God. My God, I come against any strong horse, my God, that's keeping him back, my God, but I pray that more, my God, you push him, my God, they give him an overdose of faith, my God, to pray more, to read the word more, my God, to go forth, my God. 
And to believe more in you, my God, in the name of Jesus, my God. Pray, my God, for your status, my God. She says she wants to know you. She says she wants to graduate school, my God, and have a future, my God. My God, you watch us in Jeremiah 29, 11, my God, that you have a plan for us, not to harm us, my God, but to give us hope in the future, my God. And I declare Jeremiah 29, 11 over her life, my God, right now. That you speak to her, my God. You be ruin her life, my God. That you speak to her in dreams and visions, and visions, my God. Or any way that she understands you, my God. My God, I pray that you take care and you bless her everywhere she goes in your school, my God. I pray, my God, that her house should be an example, a woman of God, my Lord. And that she will be what you would destined her to be, my God. My God, I pray for Jesus, my God, in the name of Jesus, for Johansi, my God, you bless her also, my God. She got so many questions, my God. She wants to get to know you, my God. My God, you said, ask and you shall receive, my God. And I want to, I depart, my God, a spirit of my God, of my God, of desire to seek you more, my God. And I pray you open up her eyes and understand you, my God, so she can see into the spiritual realm, my God, hear you, my God. In the name of Jesus, my God, bless her, my God, speak to her in the night, my God, in dreams, my God, so she may get to know you, Lord. My God, when I come in the course, my grandma has one, I'm going to pray for her. You brought the oil, babe? Okay, just we're gonna pray for right now. My God, we come in the presence right now, my God. Knowing that you are a powerful God, that you are the God to heal my God. But my God, we know that you died for our sins and our sicknesses, my God. So it's illegal for us to be sick, my God, when we receive you as your Lord and Savior, my God. My God, we command any disease or sickness to leave her body right now in the name of Jesus, my God. We command about the power of your spirit, my God, by the Holy Spirit, my God. We command about the power of the resurrection, my God, that whatever's in her leaves right now, my God. Because whatever's in her is stronger than whatever's in the world, my God. In the name of Jesus, my God, declare healing and deliverance in her life, my God. We loosen herself from any one of any sicknesses, my God. In the name of Jesus, my God, evil spirit in her life, my God. We cast out now in the name of Jesus, my God. And we declare your love, your love, your peace, my God. And your healing, my God. My God, my faithful belief that she's healed right now, my God. That she's healed, my God. My God, she, she, she believed in my God. She came all the way from she came from, my God. Here to hear your voice, to hear your word, my God. And I pray, my God, that the kingdom of God has come into her heart right now in the name of Jesus, my God. And I declare healing in her life, my God. Believe that you are here in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my God. My God, I pray for those who are watching. Those who will remain anonymous, my God, you bless them, my God. They, they, my God, took time to hear us, my God, to hear your word, my God, here. Time of, this, of their life, my God, to know, hear about you, my God, your word, my God. I pray that you, my God, that you reveal yourself to them in their lives, my God. In dreams and visions, my God, that you speak to them, my God, they are able to hear your voice, my God. My God, let them know, my God, that you exist and you love them, my God. I pray peace in their hearts, my God, deliverance, my God, in the name of Jesus, my God, love and understanding, my God. And I pray that they have a desire to seek you more, my God, to know who this Jesus is, my God. Jesus, Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to them, Holy Spirit. Walk in the heart in the name of Jesus. I want to make another prayer. Uh, for those who haven't received Jesus in the heart and want to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Because many people know about Jesus, but they don't know Him. we got to get to know Jesus. And this prayer, it saves you. It gives you eternal life, and you're able to receive Jesus, His mercy, His His healing, everything that Jesus has to offer. And the prayer you gotta repeat after me. It says in Romans 10:17 that you, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and this is the Son of God, that He resurrected it and is at the right hand of God, now you are saved. So repeat this after me, so you can receive Jesus, peace, healing, anything you need in life. Amen. The prayer goes like this: You gotta repeat it though out loud. I want you to repeat this. I want you to repeat this too. If you feel hard to repeat it, Amen. Father God, forgive my sins. I accept this Son Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Take me, my God, in your hands. Protect me. Heal me. Teach me. Show me things that I don't know. Father God, I receive your forgiveness. In the name of Jesus, amen. That's it. Welcome to the, to the kingdom family. Welcome to the, to the family of God. Welcome to us, amen. Welcome to God. Welcome to the family. You just have received Jesus, amen. Now you're gonna, you know, your job is to, to read what he's saying, you know. You gotta know his written word so you can be able to hear his voice, amen. And I pray that tonight he gives you dreams. Guys, say dreams, very important. Because God speaks to people in dreams, amen. So write your dreams down and you can contact me or pray about it. And we see what God's sending you through your dreams. I dream every day and I write it down. Remember, Daniel was a dreamer. Joseph was a dreamer. Remember... Um, a dream came to Joseph, Jesus' father, that Jesus was going to be born. Remember a dream came to Nebuchadnezzar. Remember that dream came to, to, to Abimelech and everybody. God speaks through dreams. Write them down. They are very important. Write them down, please. And then it was just, guys, thank you for watching. God bless you. And um, you can always, um, what you call it, Texas at 646. 
248 2509. We every Thursday live 8 o'clock, and I hope you could join us one day so you can feel the same power here that you're feeling over there, man. So, thank you for joining us, guys. Any questions, just text us and the prayer line 246. I'm sorry, 646 248 2589. Call us, text us. We'll give you the number for the prayer line. We pray every day at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it's amazing. It's an experience that you need to experience and you see how your life changes when you pray at that time. For those who ask the question, and man, God bless you, and take care. If you want to go back to this video, you can replay it to see what we spoke about in the beginning. Amen? May the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. You know what can I read now? Hold on. One second.